Hey friends, happy Friday. Justin here with a review of part two of Selena the Netflix series. I watched it, it, it might have been a week or two weeks since I, I finished the part two. Since I finished it, I have been once a day or once every other day watching something Selena related. It is, it's so interesting how addictive Selena information and, and stuff is. As soon as you watch a movie or see a documentary, then you start watching like YouTube videos and anyway, so part two of the series picks up as Selena's career is really taking off. Uh, A.B. Quintanilla, her brother, is coming into his own as a songwriter. He's being taken seriously, not only in the Tejano music scene, um, but starting to be taken seriously uh, on the mainstream. Um, Suzette, uh, Selena's sister, is coming into her womanhood, figuring out where she fits within family, but trying to establish a life of, of her own. It was really interesting. Um, you know, she's, she's watched so many people around her live their dreams and pursue their dreams and talk about their dreams. And I really liked and appreciated how, you know, she really carved a place out for herself, you know, so much so that, she, you know, I know that she regrets not making that, that final concert at the, the um, Houston Rodeo, but she was on her own path. And that's a beautiful thing considering Selena was such a strong force of gravity. It's easy to just be in addition to someone that's, you know, such a, a ball of light. And the fact that she was trying to carve out her own place, um, you know, I thought was really cool. Um, you know, her husband, Chris, you know, as they're navigating the highs and lows of, of you know, their new marriage, they've recently eloped. Oh my God. Episode one. So, when they're sitting in front of, when they pull up in front of the house after they've eloped and they're about to go in and tell Selena's father, I literally had to pause Netflix and smoke a cigarette. I, I just, I couldn't like, I'm 35 years old. I was on Facebook. I told someone, I said, I'm literally 35 years old. I don't have anything to worry about. Why am I so nervous about this girl getting married? So anyway. So, so they elope, you know, they're starting their family. Selena is getting bigger and bigger. Um, Selena's dad, he's, he's just my favorite character of the series. He just really is the way that they've, they've written the character and humanized him. Um, just a great, you know, stand-up guy. And so, you know, she's winning Tijano Entertainer of the Year, you know, a couple of years in a row, getting these bigger endorsement deals and she's recording some of these really big pop songs you know dreaming of you and um you know some of her english songs and you know things are really taking off for her you know and and it's decided that you know what maybe selena needs a little bit of help with you know from someone that she can trust um, to manage some of all of these fabulous ideas, the boutiques, the English album, the Tejano music, you know, everything that she had going on, the fashion line, um, she, she, you know, they, they illustrated that she really, really needed some help balancing all of that. And I like that they didn't shy away from everyone's responsibility in finding Yolanda Sal Salivar or Salivar. Um, Selena needed help, and that's what they illustrated in the, the show. And I'm going to give you my real honest opinion about it here, and so, you know, I hope nobody shoots me. Um, but they illustrated that Selena needed the help, that, you know, Suzette was on board, that the dad went out and, you know, really sealed the deal. So everyone was really in on this situation. Um... You know, and they didn't try to cast blame 
uh, anywhere in the, you know, in the show. Now, after I watched it, and, you know, after being enthralled in all of the characters, um, it's kind of interesting to see where the, the chips fell. I'm going to tell you what, what I mean. Selena was making all of the right choices. She was a growing entertainer, and her role as, a, as an artist, as a creator, was to create, was to uh, enlarge her territory, was to, to, and everything she touched turned to gold, and so let's do it with clothes, let's do it here, let's do it there. She was the dreamer. What Selena needed was the infrastructure. She needed a, a, a Whitney Houston, a Gloria Estefans. She needed that kind of infrastructure. And there was always a lot of push and pull, you know, about outsiders coming in or doing things in a, in a new way. So Selena never received, you know, the, the, the five star, the celebrity infrastructure that she needed to maintain all of these businesses. And that ultimately, unfortunately, became her undoing. Um, it's also evidence to me in the fact that, you know, while A.B. made some amazing, amazing songs and Bitty Bitty Bomb Bomb is, you know, one of my favorite songs. Um, his songs were not able to cross or have an impact in, in the mainstream at the time. You know, the songs that he was writing, they had to outsource. They had to go to different places to get songs that would really highlight Selena to a wider audience. And A.B., unfortunately, did not have the forte as creative as he was and as hard as he was trying. You know, and they, they showed how hard he tried. Um, but, but to, you know, he wasn't able to, to you know, put her voice um, in, in mainstream America like, you know, the well-oiled well machine can. And so you have, you know, those outside influences coming in and, and, you know, things changing. And it, you know, without casting blame, because I love every one of them, you know, I, like they're my family. Um, you know, that, that those series of events and, and chain of not being prepared for stardom led to her ultimate demise. But anyway, um, just had a blast, you know, as she rose to fame, uh, had a blast as she was coming into her own and her dreams were coming true and moving into the house and being with Chris. And it was really poignant to see that you know, you can have so many things and so many of your dreams can be coming true and you can still yearn for more and you can still, you know, have trouble in your marriage and still want, you know, uh, other things. And so that was a unique lesson to me that, you know, happiness is what you make of it and it's measured. It's not just a goal you reach one day. I am, you know, absolutely devastated that we'll never see the full, you know, potential of Selena. Um, but I'm going to leave you with this. There was that, there was one fan who spoke up when her dad went to his school and spoke up about the fact that he hadn't received his fan mail. Either dad was in school that day. No, no, no. Suzette was in school. And she, I, was it Suzette? I think it was Suzette. And, oh gosh, don't get me to lying now. But dad found out that, um, so, okay, no, let me take all of that back. This was before Selena died. So Selena was in class telling the kids to stay in school. And that young man said, I'm your biggest fan. You know, I paid some money to the fan club. And I never, ever got my merchandise. Sorry, guys, I had my thoughts so screwed around. And I thought this was one of the biggest marks of, of being a star to me. Um, she got his information, talked to her dad, and told him to fix it. And 
he got in contact, you know, I, I get a, mo- a little bit emotional just thinking about the scene. I hope it's a, tr- you know, a little bit of a true story, but he gets in contact with, with the mother of this young man while, you know, he's sitting down at the table. And, you know, while the young man is thrilled that, you know, Miss, Mr. Quintanilla is calling, he understands that it's because, you know, she, he had said something to Selena and she promised that she was going to get it done. So, you know, he didn't fall out out of excitement and, and surprise. He expected her to do what she said that she was going to do. And, and the fact that she did and saw it through, she knew what mechanism it took to get, you know, the fans... Um, wish or, or, or dream and I don't know I got emotional thinking about it because that's the mark of a true star that doesn't forget the people that are you know there and and really supporting them and so you know a few scenes later mom and son together are you know singing I'm getting emotional now <laughs> thinking about it but mom and son are are singing at the concert you know both fans now because of, you know, the gesture that she showed. I'm sorry, guys, but, you know, I, I just loved, uh, learned some new things about Selena. She really, truly became a superstar to me watching this time around. I think Christian um, did a phenomenal job. I lost uh, Selena in her performance several times. I lost Suzette. And, and, you know, the girl, the girl who, who played Suzette, obviously dad and, and AB, I mean, everyone was just a, a, an excellent, excellent choice. Um, you know, even down to Miss Yolanda, but I see this is a, a very, very long review, you know, long story short, I give the second round or the second part of Selena, the series five stars. It's, it's an absolute must watch. It keeps the pace and the momentum of the first series and even escalates it. I think the second part is even more exciting to me than the first. What parts stood out to you? I'm really excited to hear your thoughts. Did any parts move you the way that they moved me? Um, and what are your favorite Selena songs, if any? I have been listening to Selena songs for, for days now, so I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. So I hope you enjoyed this review of Selena the series. I hope to catch you in my next video. You guys have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.